Tableau does a great job of making visualizations look really nice from the get-go, far better in my opinion than any other BI tool around. Now this is really important because just one thing out of place is enough to take away from the visualization. It's the same as listening to a person tell a story with broccoli in their teeth. It's very hard to concentrate on what they're actually saying. So let's get started with some basic formatting. <music> In this video, I'm going to show you how to format bar charts and pie charts. So this is super important in the way we communicate information through the use of colors, orientation, sizing, and all that. So let me show you how to do it. We're going to build a pie chart, sorry, a bar chart from scratch. So this is just to, you know, keep doing it, keep practicing. You know, we learn by doing. So I'm going to this time use profit. So I'm going to double click that. And so we have a profit bar chart. Pretty cool. And I want to split this up by, you know, subcategory. So I'm going to get subcategory here. I can double click and straight away we have it all split out. Um, the color blue is it's so flat, right? So we want to use colors to kind of, you know, make it jump out at us. So what we can do is we can grab profit and drop it into color. And you can see now that there's a bit of a color scale, which is the higher the number is, the darker the color. Great. Well, we can use this to our advantage, right? In particular for profit. We're interested in what is making a lot of profit and what is not making a lot of profit. So we can click here on color, <clears throat> go edit colors, and we can change the palette color here. So you can have it just as a single color. All right, so let's say green. Let me just move this to the side and we can see it and go apply. Eh, not so good. Let's change it to gray. Eh, even worse. Okay, let's do it when it's like two colors. Let's go orange, blue. All right, so you can see now that there's a bit of contrast, pretty good. But because we're talking about profit, we're talking about currency, maybe red green is actually a pretty good one. So if I go apply, you can see all the green ones are very obvious and all the red ones you can see, oh, wow, those are pretty low. You know, I think that's something we need to discuss, right? So that's where your use of colors is really good. You can also use one of my personal favorites, which is red and black. And the reason this is my favorite is it really shows you the ones you need to be looking at. So if I go red, black and apply, notice that the greens, right, which are now gray, <clears throat> you almost don't notice them, right? You're actually focused on the red. Uh, and that is good because with most dashboards, we want to create what's called actionable data, something that's obvious of like, oh man, computer chairs and stationary supplies are really low. Let's discuss that, right? Um, but if everything's sort of like green, let's just say, or no color palette at all, at all. It's a little bit harder to be like, okay, you can still do it by any means, but like uh, by all means, but it's just a little bit harder. Okay. So we want to have that. We had red and black. The other thing we can do about uh, with this is we can actually sort at highest to lowest. So with typically with bar charts, we want to be able to do that and, you know, use kind of the Pareto principle of, you know, seeing all the biggest issues on the left side or the right side or whatever it might be. So the um, icons we use are these two. So this lets us um, go, uh, I think, lowest to highest and then highest to lowest. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, so you can see it's sorted them, or I can go the other way. All right, and if I press it again, all right, you can just kind of keep switching between the two. If you want to get rid of it, you click here on the subcategory where it's got now this symbol. All right, oh, you'll see it, that little sort symbol. Right click and go clear sort. And that just goes back to normal. Okay. The other thing I want to do is instead of it kind of going this way, maybe I want to going this way. <clears throat> so what you can do is actually swap columns and rows, right? Very easily. And you can do that by pressing this button. And this is the transpose tool. Okay. And all it's doing is it's swapping these two, right? So it's, it makes it really easy. So when I'm building visualizations and I don't quite know what I want it to look like, I can use this button and these sorts to kind of like play around with it until I got something I like. So here we've got a bar chart <clears throat> going to the right. And what we can do is we can add some labels. So for example, let's say I wanted to have it say subcategory and the value itself. Um, I can go subcategory, right? Where is the subcategory and drop it into label. Cool. So I've got the labels in there, but I also want to add the actual value itself. So let's bring in profit and put it into label. And you'll see what happens once I do that only some of them are appearing. So I mentioned earlier that whenever you have labels that don't fit or they overlap, Tableau will only show one. 
So it's a bit of an issue. I want it to show on each one. So we need to modify the layout of this text label. So the way I do that is I simply click label, click on the three dots, right, similar to what we did to pie charts, and I can just reorganize this. So I can bring subcategory to the front and make it just like a single row item. And I can go space, bracket, bracket, and let's make this bold. We can preview, go, all right, that looks good. I want a dollar symbol at the front. Okay, so we got a dollar symbol there. Let's make it, just get rid of that extra line. Let's make a center justified. Let's preview. Okay, that looks good to me. Go apply. And you can see on the background, that looks a lot better now. We can switch to that entire view mode to really just take up a lot of space, similar to pie charts. Right, it's looking much better now, right? There you go, you can have some labels. Obviously, I wouldn't do it this way <laughs> in real life. Um, this is just an example because there's no need to show value because I have an access. And there's no need to show this label because I have it here. <clears throat> but just in case you ever wanted to do it. The other thing I can change when it comes to formatting is the size of the bars. So let's say they're a bit too big for me. I can click on size and I can reduce it. All right. Or if I want to show like, you know, I'm a, I'm a big bar guy, you know, and I can just go full, full bar, full bar, baby. All right. There you go. So that's what the sizing does. Now for each type of visualization you do, these things will do slightly different things depending on your layout, but very slightly. And we'll go through that as kind of time goes on. The next thing is a detail. This just ignore. Right at this stage, not applicable uh, for a lot of the things we're going to do. Once you get into more advanced um, visualizations, this button becomes much more uh, important. Then you also have the tooltip. So what is the tooltip? When you hover over anything, you'll see that there's this kind of like tooltip, right, which has some information. The default is whatever values you've used to actually create the visualization, it'll have it in there plus the actual value itself. So you can see subcategory and profit. All right. But let's say I wanted to add, you know, I wanted to modify this, right, to be not so boring. Well, I can click on tooltip, like so, and I can say, and you just edit it like Microsoft Word, right? In the sub category, comma, and we can bring this one up. <clears throat> the profit is, right, and then you bring sum of profit. And one of the things people like to do is, um, if you get rid of this, they'll make these ones slightly bigger than the rest. So they'll go like uh, maybe 12 or something like that. Uh, let's go 12. And let's go preview the bottom here. You can see it kind of jumps out at you. But let's give this a little bit of color. So it really jumps out at you. Let's give this a blue. Let's give this, uh, I don't want to say red because uh, then it means it's bad. So let's go, um, let's go orange, All right? And it's bold, so let's go preview. Okay, it's a little bit better. Let's do a dollar symbol there. Let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe 14. Okay, 14, let's go preview. Okay, there you go. So if I go okay, when I hover, you can see, oh, in the subcategory. So it's a little bit more like human speak as opposed to just, you know, table things, right? So that's your tool tips. So now let's cover the same thing for pie charts. It's actually very similar. So if I go into a new sheet, okay, and we're gonna do a pie chart. So again, with a pie chart, we need two things, a measure and a dimension. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do sales this time. And let's do region this time. Yeah, so I'll go four regions. Then I'm gonna go into show me here in the top right corner, and I'm just gonna press this pie button. Cool, so we now have the regions. I'm gonna minimize this. We're gonna switch this to entire view, like so. So I'm not gonna go through the labels because we did that in the previous video and the tool tips here are exactly the same as the previous one. The only one I really wanna show you is the colors and the size. So if you click on colors and go edit colors, it's a little bit different. And that is because there's not really a color scaling in terms of value, it's really colored based on the individual slices, not the value of the slice. So we can actually change these colors. So let's say I don't want blue for central, I want purple. All you do is you click central, click on purple, and then you go apply. 
all right? And you can change the color. What you can also do is change the entire palette itself. So you have some pretty cool ones here. So let's say I've got superficial stone, right? So this has changed. These are still the same. So to apply this palette directly, you can just press assign palette, all right? And it'll apply the palette. That looks too similar to the previous one. Let's change it. Let's go jewel bright, assign palette. So you can see these are now different. I can go apply and now I have a whole different set. Again, I can just, I can customize this to make it whatever I like, right? Or just assign the whole palette, all right? So that's the first thing when it comes to coloring for pie charts. The other is the size. So the size controls the actual size of the pie chart. Typically what I do though, is this part, you can see you can get <laughs> really massive. Typically what I do though for um, pie charts is when I'm building it in, before I put it on a dashboard, I don't even bother with the size because what happens is once you take your pie charts and start putting it into dashboards, you need to scale it relative to how big it is in the dashboard. We'll get to that later, right? So I usually don't play with this very much at the beginning. Right? So that is how you format bar charts and pie charts. See you at the next video.